Well, Mark Palace, I'm sure, as chairman of Tramway Road, as you'd like to pay tribute to Johnny King. Yeah, I think the um, <clears throat> the fans of the course of the last uh, few hours have been paying their own tributes, and I think that's that in itself is is everything that needs to be said about the man because he was. Uh, and I spoke to the family today, and he said, you know, he was a man of the people, and I think that's exactly right. Um, for me, he was uh, he was a player's manager, and uh, he was equally a manager that um, had style both on the pitch and off the pitch, and I think that's you know, what everybody would say about him: great manager, great man. To what extent? Is the Tramia Road as we, we know today down to him? Well, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're in the National League and that's not down to him at all. Um, I think if you, if you talk about uh, the Tramia Rovers, you know, I always say you talk about the club, you talk about the fans because they are the club. And so many of the fans, in terms of their um, allegiance to the club, started in the days that um, Johnny was manager here in his second period. So as a consequence of that, yeah, you could say a lot of the people and a lot of the affection that the people have for the club have been generated um, by what the man did, certainly in his second spell. It's a measure of how well he did that the club are where they are now compared to where they were when he was in charge and how far he took them as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think you, 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 you can't deny the fact that you know, there are two men, for me, who in terms of uh, this club and, and, and its best days, and, it was Peter Johnson who provided the resources and Johnny King who applied those resources. So it's the two men together, I think, who brought the club to, 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 to its great days you know, and the, the, the period when Wembley, they say, was his second home. And it's a measure of the man that if you look outside at that statue, it's covered in flags, scarves and other tributes as well, isn't it? Yes, indeed. And I think, and again, that, that statue uh, was, was not raised by, if you like, the club, the corporate entity, it was raised by money from the fans through the Supporters Trust, which you know, is different to the other statues that you see on Merseyside. Uh, so I think it, it, in that regard, I think um, the statue in itself is a fantastic testament to the man. To many fans looking back through Tramway Roof, supported Rovers through thick and thin, Johnny King was the man who epitomised what was good about Tramway Rovers, and even though he's sadly no longer with us, will he still be what Rovers as a club looked to do while he was in charge? Yeah, it's always difficult to emulate um, particular individuals and the styles and you know, times have, have their times. But if you say to me, um, what would you like the club to be? I'd like to be, yeah, I'd like to be a club that's knocking on the door of the Premiership. I'd like to be a club that's regularly in the Championship. I'd like to be a club that plays with a certain amount of style and panache uh, that entertains the fans. So yes, um, yeah, you would like to emulate what he brought during his second period here at the club. Are you expecting an emotional day on Saturday, all the fans at Prenton Park? We, we, we have no indication that there's any, but many more fans than usual, but what we have done, and we, again we, we, we confirm this with the family today, that uh, we'll have a moment's applause, but you know, equally I think they were quite keen that if, if um, the fans felt that they wanted to chant during that period, and that, that minute, then, then please feel free to chant. So from where we are, you know, we, we've got a, we'll have a period whereby we will acknowledge Johnny during the just before the game, and you know if it's if it's chance and applause and making noise, and that's fantastic because that will probably emulate a lot of the the games that we had here under Johnny. Uh, and I would like to see that you know if they feel free, if they want to cheer and chant his name during the course of the game itself, I'm sure that will inspire the lads. Eight years as a player, 14 years as a manager over two spells. That's that's an amazing achievement, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, saw, I never saw him as a player, uh, but he tells me that. Um, he always used to say to me, I was like him as a player, I was, and then he'd tell me I was pretty poor. So <laughs> <laughs> he was a modest guy. Um, and uh, as, as a manager, as I say, I, I, I had the advantage of, of being managed by him. And he always used to say to me, look, you played a lot of games under me. And when he finished, when I finished here at Tramway, I, I later patched up with him again towards the end of my career as I was just kicking my heels in the non-league. And he was the same guy. I remember him being able to persuade me. I was working on site down up in Newcastle but to come all the way back for a game against Marine uh, and um, in midweek, which was like a three and a half hour trip down the game and then a three and a half trip back. Uh, and he could persuade you to do that sort of thing. And, and we actually won one nil, I scored and I was toweling off on the, on, the, on the bench after the game in the dressing room, just waiting to drive another three and a half hours back to Newcastle to start work tomorrow, the next morning. And he just came up to me and winked at me and said, worth it, isn't it, son? <laughs> and it's, it's those types of things. But for those people who know Johnny, uh, know that that's what he could get out of you. Great, though, that the club 
and, and the trust gave him that statue when he was still alive and, and could still see just what he meant in, in that context. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it happened in the early days that we arrived here. We, 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 Nicky and I claim no credit for that. Um, it, was dis it was disturbing to see him where he was. He was clearly not well. Uh, but having said that, you know, the, the, he, he, you could see the recognition came into his eyes, and, and that was and that was great. And he actually, I remember, he was sitting in front of, in, in the front row, just in front of uh, me, and he stood up and, and gave his trademark salute, lifting both hands uh, unaided and un, un, unprompted. Uh, so you know, clearly he was with it, and he understood what was going on, and, and uh, he made that connection with the fans. It's been really important for you since you came back here to, to pay tribute to all the old players that have been so successful here in the past, with the pictures behind us on the, the walls and in the suites as well, and it's a measure of how many he's on as well. Yeah, um, he, he features, and again, that, that if you like, is some kind of sort of uh, easy yardstick is to the influence that people had at the club, and whilst the wall behind me has all the managers on the club, yeah, he's there with quite a number of teams as well, and I think you know, it was the relationship with the teams that, that, that was one of his um, strong characteristics, if you like, as a manager. Uh, so to see that, yeah, he, he's just part of the history that's on the wall behind me. What did he mean to you personally then? Uh, King and I had our ups and downs, there's no two ways about it. He used to say to me that, you know, you're too much like me. Um, mm. But he was a man who could get the best out of me and he, he, he knew how to motivate me. And as I say, years later, um, I teamed up with him again on, on a number of occasions. He tried to get me back, even for the famous game against Exeter, which uh, he was trying to get hold of me because we were so low on players that he was trying to drag me back to play on that. So, uh, it, yeah, he, he's a guy that um, features large. And when I went to the FA, I remember thinking, well, when I was thinking about discipline on the pitch, that it begins and starts with the manager because that's what Kingy used to do. When you walk out the dressing room door, you know what you want to, what, what's expected of you and what you need to do. In my case, he treated all players differently. In my case, when I get to the door, he'd slap me around the face twice, and <laughs> you know, he'd, he'd fire you up to go out onto the pitch. So um, he was a guy of great influence, and people have said he could have managed higher, but I've got absolutely no doubt about that. Did he epitomise what was all good about Tramir Rovers looking back through history through thick and thin, personally with yourself and for the club and the fans as well? Yeah, I think he did. Again, he, he, he was a guy from Merseyside who understood what the club meant and uh, he had the old set of values and you know he understood what the badge meant. So yeah, he, he did epitomise what the club's about and this is a club that, that, that's about endeavour, trying to do things the right way uh, and uh, I think that what, that's what he, he always tried to instil in you, that we, that we do it the right way. Uh, he had that nice black blend of, of being the aggressive warrior but being a gentleman as well. And lots of the modern play, or players in the squad now may not remember him in person but the influence still must rub off on the players of today that he brought to Tranmere. Yeah, because I mean, Sean, Sean will know him well, and Sean knew him in, in his second spell here at the club. So, you know, Sean has, has got a lot of that, and, and there's, there's guys like uh, Andy Parkinson who, who's, who's around, uh, and, and so yeah, I mean, it, it's quite a tight knit club, and so there's lots of people here who were still here <coughs> when I was here. Uh, so you know, I think that um, they all understand what the DNA of the club is and, and, and what part Johnny played in developing that over a period of time. Some of the some of the ex-players ex have spoken today about not realising at the time they were playing in Johnny King's team how much of a good time they were having. Was, was that your experience? Yeah, I think that... Um, I, I, but I think that's fair to true of all players. They never really appreciate uh, what they've got while they've got it. And you, you, get, you get all the old players coming back and saying, listen, this is over pretty soon, lads. So there is an element of that. I think that um, you know, when, when things were going well, uh, you know, it's fantastic to be a professional footballer. It's fantastic to be a professional footballer anyway, but when things are going really well, uh, then, then, that, then that's good. I think players perhaps don't understand what part a manager brings to it until they stand back and look at it afterwards, until they then see other managers as well. Uh, and, then, and then I think on reflection, Johnny will compare with any, anybody that, uh, you know, that, they, that they've played under. But Pat Nevin was saying something along that, 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 he, that he always, his manage, man management skills were, were quite different to any other manager he'd ever come across. And I suppose for you, uh, in that team of the 70s, which was a, 
team he inherited from Ron Yates, wasn't it? I mean, what did what did he do to change that team a little bit? Well, I think that I've always said this about John. One of the things he could do was to appreciate the blend of players. Mm. Uh, and one of his favourite sayings, which wasn't nautical, but it was uh, more culinary, was that you know, a team is like putting a cake together. It's the ingredients that make the cake. It's like gestaltism that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. But and, and, and he appreciated that more than most and how people could play together and how they fit together as a team. So I think that, that was probably um, one of the things that, that, that made him a really good manager. In terms of that team, um, he had the nucleus of a side because we went down as quite a young team. Um, there was about four or five, five or six of us in fact of that team that played about 28 games together. Yeah. Unchanged, that came together in the same trials, and there was Ronnie Moore, uh, Rep, yeah. Les Parry, myself, Bobby Tynan, Dickie Johnson, um, Russ Allen, and uh, Eddie Flood. And whilst some of those came a little bit later, the majority of those have been together. So we all came to fruition at the same time, all around about the age mm -hmm. 25. So we had that, but on top of that, he, he overlaid some experienced pros that were around uh, the, the Tommy Beaches, the, the and, and as a consequence, he, he you know he had a really good team that came together at the same time. But then he got the best out of us, you know. And, and uh, in the season that we we had, whereby we went for so long and changed, I would say that I always remember thinking that was the point at which the club didn't do what they could have done, and then kicked us on to the next level, mm -hmm. and and actually brought in one or two players to have helped the squad. So by the time we got to the end of that run, we had players who were. Um, in the reserves, who, who were not sort of ready to go straight into the first team, because none of them had any sort of appearances in the first team. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Kingy, Kingy got the best out of that squad.